Hello friends. Today I have an interesting topic to discuss with you that is uh, risk of oxygen therapy in COPD. What is COPD by the way? Everybody knows uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Actually I don't want to give you a long uh, lecture about COPD but still as an introduction I have to give you a brief idea. COPD is not a specific disease but it is a group of diseases uh, which all cause breathing difficulty such as emphysema, severe uh, bronchitis, chronic bronchitis and refractory asthma. It is considered as a progressive disease uh, that means uh, the disease grows as the time goes. It is life threatening and has no cure. The treatment goal includes relieving symptoms and uh, the improving exercise tolerance and treating the complications and slowing the progress of the disease. Oxygen therapy is a type of treatment in COPD. Not all the COPD patients need oxygen, but it includes in the treatment plan. We use oxygen therapy in uh, hospitals to treat the COPD exacerbation. And you know, the oxygen is a type of medicine once you started to use in treatment. And all the medicines are like a venom of a snake. Have you ever noticed the logo of the pharmacy in worldwide? A snake is spitting venom to the glass. The moral of the logo is means what I said. So all the medicines are like a venom of a snake and used with the caution. Odotherapy is helpful in many disorders, but its inappropriate use may lead to toxic effect involving CNS, lung, and iris. The management of toxicity is purely supportive, so the early recognition and prevention is very important. In some individuals, the effect of oxygen therapy on COPD is to cause increased CO2 level, hypoventilation and even death. People with severe lung disorders or central respiratory depression patients who receive supplemental oxygen therapy need close monitoring. In individuals with COPD and similar lung problems, the clinical features of oxygen toxicity is just because of uh, high CO2 level in the blood or hypercapnia. And this is mainly of course by three different mechanisms. Let's have a look on that. The first one is ventilation perfusion mismatch. We are calling VQ mismatch. Normally, the COPD patients have underventilated lung or some area of their lung may be not getting enough oxygen. So we have a physiological mechanism to overcome that problem that is called hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. The capillaries to the underventilated area will constrict and redirect the blood to other areas where there is good oxygenation available. Thus, the ventilation perfusion ratio will be maintained normally. This normal physiological compensation will overcome with excessive O2 administration because it will suppress the hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction and blood will pass through the dead spaces without any perfusion. And the COPD patient cannot uh, increase the minute volume because of their poor lung condition. So if no perfusion, the CO2 retention will occur. The second one is Haldane effect. Mostly deoxygenated hemoglobin is binding with CO2 than oxyhemoglobin. Increasing the amount of oxygen in the blood by supplemental oxygen reduces the amount of deoxyhemoglobin. So it decreases the capacity of blood to carry CO2 to the lung for elimination. As per the studies, it contributes 25% of CO2 retention. The third one is respiratory homeostasis. In healthy individuals, rise of CO2 causes an increased drive to breathe. But chronic lung disease patients, this response is blunted, so they have only hypoxic drive. Giving supplemental oxygen reduces their stimulus to breathe, causing hypoventilation and then CO2 retention. I have gone through many literature and studies. Many of them are believing this is a myth, but still people are believing uh, this is also causing CO2 retention. So let's wind up. Titrating oxygen appropriately in exacerbation of COPD is challenging. It can be harmed by too much or too little oxygen. It must be remembered that most of such patients spend much of their lives with abnormally low PO2 and their body is adjusted with that physiologically. So just include this in your plan of care to titrate oxygen to maintain uh, SpO2 88 to 92% and PO2 is just above 50%. And always remember that oxygen is a medicine and all the medicines are like a venom of a snake. Use with caution. Thank you for watching me. Bye bye.